Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So I'll ditch the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Seba, and today we're investigating a crucial concept in accounting and financial mathematics, which is annuity factors. Those are quite concise formulas that can allow you to easily calculate present value or future value of regular cash flow streams. In finance, we quite often deal with regular predictable cash flow streams that go on for a set number of periods. Let's say we might uh, invest in a bond that delivers a fixed coupon payment for the next 10 years, for example, and we would like to value this bond. Or from a more household finance example, let's say we might want to save up to buy a house in 20 years time. We want a set value to get accumulated in our bank account. And we might want to determine how much do we need to save each year to put up for buying a house in 20 years time. Uh, those are very practical and very commonly dealt with questions and annuity factors are there to help you deal with them. So first of all, let's uh, specify our example. Let's say we've got a 10 year stream of cash flows at 10% interest rate, which is also the discount rate for present value considerations. And let's say we have got simple 100 pounds a year cash flows. And here I'll show you how the annuity factor approach simplifies the calculations massively without you having to do the conventional discounted cash flow framework. Because if you didn't know annuity factors, you would have, well, defined your cash flow schedule. Let's say you would plot it the years. So 10 years going one year at a time. Then for present value, we need to discount the cash flows. So divide the regular 100 pounds a year cash flow by one plus the interest rate, which is also the discount rate raised to the power of the respective years. That would produce the stream of discounted cash flows. And then we would need to sum them all up to arrive at the present value of 614 pounds. This implies that if we've got a 10 year bond, which pays 100 pounds um, and the yield is 10%, uh, we can assess its fair value. So its current market price should be around 614 pounds. In terms of future value, the approach would be quite similar, but we would need to multiply our regular cash flows uh, reflecting the fact how they appreciate, how they capitalize at the compound interest rate of 10%. So we'll need to multiply by one plus the interest rate raised to the power of the total number of years minus the years in the schedule we've defined. This uh, warrants a more detailed explanation because at the final year, the cash flow is not compounded whatsoever. That's the final payment we make to save up for the house, for example. Whereas the one that we make at the end of the first year has nine years to compound, and that's why its future value is the highest. And so if we sum up our future values, we'll get 1,594 pounds. That implies that if we save 100 pounds each year, for 10 years straight, deposit them at our bank account at 10% at the end of each year. Towards the end of this period, we will have 1,594 pounds at our bank account. However, annuity factors allow us to skip this stage entirely by just condensing all of the logic of discounted or compounded cash flows into one figure, which is the annuity factor. And there are two separate formulas which look very similar to calculate present value and future value based on annuity factors. And uh, let's calculate them and compare the results for um, the annuity uh, method and our direct 
uh, method with the discounted cash flow and compounded cash flow schedules. So for the annuity factor uh, for the present value calculation, in the numerator, we need to subtract from 1, 1 plus the interest rate, raised to the power of negative number of years, and divided by the interest rate in the denominator. Our annuity factor would be 6.14, approximately. For the future value factor, in the numerator we have got 1 plus the interest rate raised to the power of the uh, duration, the maturity of our bond or the number of years we save up for the house, minus 1 divided by the interest rate. That gives us an annuity factor of 15.94 approximately. Now for the present value and future value using the annuity method, we can just multiply those annuity factors by the value of the regular cash flow, arriving at identical results, which means that the mathematics of annuity factors allows you to correctly capture what's going behind the scenes when discounting or compounding regular cash flows. Why does it work? Well, the essence of this formula is the mathematics of geometric series. You can condense a sum of a geometric series into one formula, and that's exactly what those uh, two equations do for the particular case of compounded or discounted cash flows. That's the mathematical background of it. What is also quite useful is that even if we change, let's say, the number of years, let's say reduce it to 5, or increase it to 15, the calculations will still hold true. They are robust to changes in our initial assumptions. Um, and what is also quite intuitive is that if we uh, reduce our interest rate to a value that's near zero, so let's say 0.0001%, then our uh, annuity factors, both for the present value and future value, would be equal just to the maturity of our cash flow schedule, so the number of years. As there are no, or approximately no, is our interest rate is very small, time value of money considerations, the value, either present or future, of the stream of cash flows is just the number of said cash flows. Uh, however, what is also very useful uh, for annuity factors in particular, they allow us to address many questions directly. For example, let's say that we need to save one million pounds um, for 10 years at 10%, and we need to determine how much do we need to deposit each year. And for that, we can just divide the uh, amount that we need to get accumulated at the end of the 10 years by the future value annuity factor and get around 63,000 pounds. Uh, this uh, is impossible to do uh, as conveniently and as directly with the conventional method. And that's another way where annuity factors shine, and that's why they are so widely used in accounting, actuarial mathematics, and uh, financial applications. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you'd like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and support us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.